Where are we? We're home. We are? Oh, We're home. oh my gosh, we are. I know it seems very unfamiliar. We knew 2019 was going to be the traveling summer. Yes. Starting with the big boy and, as it happens, ending with, with the, the big, big boy. boy. Uh, well, not quite, because we still have the ghost train of yes. Old Ely, and well, we're leaving again in about 48 hours to go do that. Yes, right. But as we speak right now, Ed is running, uh, Ed and the crew are running the big boy mm -hmm. up and down Cajon Pass three times. Isn't that neat? Isn't that so cool in California? Yes. And on their way there, they came through here, mm -hmm. and so, of course, we chased. We had to through chase them. Wyoming and and down through central Utah. Right, we're very chaste. And then we, we abandoned the chase to come home for a couple of days. Yes, before the ghost train. Before the ghost train. Mm -hmm. So check this out. This is us <laughs> chasing the big boy one last time in 2019. <laughs> well, the train arrived in Evanston around, oh, one in the afternoon, something like that. Right. <laughs> it had been so cold the night before, everything was frozen solid, but by, by this time, things had thawed out, but it was still cold enough that this locomotive was giving off really neat looking steam. Yes. We've been away from the locomotive for a little while, and every time we see this thing, it, it just blows me away how beautiful it is, how well restored it is, and, and how just flat big it is. Ed and the guys just did a, a bang up job on this thing. I'm always glad that we had the opportunity to visit this while it was under restoration. It's uh, neat to see. Yeah, we got up to Cheyenne a couple of different times just to get the chef's tour of the proverbial kitchen and, and watch them working on this thing. There's just nothing simple about working on something this big. Yeah, just watching them install the pop valves they used a wrench, if you can call it a wrench. I mean, it looked just like an end wrench, except it was the size of a human being hanging, <laughs> hanging from the crane, the overhead crane. Here Ted is pulling out the air hose. Uh, they're going to oil around. Uh, the air hose runs the grease gun. The, a lot of the fittings on this are manually lubricated and they have to stop several times throughout the day just to oil all the way around the locomotive. It's, a, it's an endless job. On this particular day, uh, Ted here was firing the locomotive. He was also the engineer on the 844. Last time we came through when they were double heading, uh, Ed was running the big boy, Ted was engineering 844. 
today he's firing, and as it happens at this exact moment, he's oiling around. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everybody has to do everything. It's just a Herculean job. Sort of recalls a time in American history when, uh, well, you really earned your paycheck. <laughs> Boy, I would guess so. <sighs> Stout people back then, I'll tell you what. We need to keep in mind that we're inside the active yard, not far from the active main line here of the Union Pacific. Normally, you'd get kicked out of here and arrested if you made a fuss about it. Uh, but when the big boy comes around, they'll let you get close, and it gives you a chance to actually come inside the yard and, and see what's going on. But you have to be constantly aware you are in the yard. You are near the active tracks. Uh, a train could come on any track at any time. Double lock, tickle lock, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, what? It leaves you wondering why, you know, they spike a switch closed in this case. Don't use it. Now, periodically, they also have to add water to the three tenders. Here, Ed is doing just that. They're pumping the water out of a fire hydrant up to the Art Lockman car, which has the water purification system inside it. And from there, the water runs to the second auxiliary tender, flows through the air gap here, and fills this gigantic water tank. Wow. Of course, there used to be water tanks all along the route, and they could pick up water that way. Nowadays, they have to carry tens of thousands of gallons of water with them. Once it's in the three tenders, it's equalized between the three with these blue hoses that run between the tenders. So the water level's the same in all three water tanks. Now, one of the questions that comes up all the time is, why is there always a diesel in tow? Yes, I've heard that it's actually pushing the Where big boy. That? Yeah, it's, well, it serves a lot of purposes. Uh, probably the number one purpose is dynamic braking. Modern locomotives all have electric dynamic brakes, very similar to what you'd have on like a, a hybrid car. Right and the railroad demands that every moving train have these dynamic brakes that you can see right here. But the locomotive does add power when needed. If they need to add a little throttle, they can do that. All of the functions of the diesel locomotive can be controlled right here inside the cab of a steam engine. Nice. Isn't that cool? That's the way really that neat. Works? Yeah. But they always travel with a diesel uh, for, for various reasons. Sometimes it's also used just to generate electricity for the passenger cars to run the air conditioning and so on. Today they have a, a hotel power generator on the train so they don't need that. Now they also have to add oil to uh, the first tender to run the fire and the locomotive. They just use old used motor oil. Right, that's a good use for it. Absolutely. And what's really neat is this rig here. Um, one of the guys that's sort of a follower of the program, uh, his name is uh, Dean, but they call him Wayne. I noticed that <laughs> Wayne is on his tank, so maybe that's just CB talk. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But look how he's painted his Kenworth. I love it. And he goes everywhere the train goes. And it's his rig. It's his deal. He doesn't work for the railroad. This is just really neat what you're doing. It is. It's been fun. Got 10 years. And it's a grand idea. Yeah. So you always move with the train? I even helped. I, I came out and helped put the pistons in the train and stuff. And yeah, they, they don't let me sit around. They no. All the time. Well, you got a lot to get done, so I can understand that. Yeah. And I don't mind it. No, of course no, not. I, I, I like working. 
You know, I never grow tired of just seeing how big this is in comparison with myself. Uh, it's just huge. It's gigantic. It is the world's largest operating steam engine, steam locomotive, and one of the largest ever built. I can believe that. And there's a lot of debate over what was the largest. It sort of depends how you measure it, but one of the largest locomotives ever built and the largest uh, still operating. Well, it took almost as much time to put it to bed as it took to get here in the first place. Wow, lots to do. Lots to do. So much time spent on maintenance. So we stopped by the roundhouse on our way out. It's just, the, the restoration goes on. At this point, they've moved all the work to indoors. Uh, given how cold it is, that's uh, perfectly understandable. Right. Well, they're going to be back here before first light because they plan on leaving town around 8 a.m. It was a typical Evanston morning, really cold and frozen. Yeah, yeah, well below freezing this morning, but that sure makes the steam look neat. They've got the tender heaters on too, which looks really neat.
Here we are in the lower part of Echo Canyon. As the train comes through, we'll get to hear why they call it Echo Canyon. <laughs> yes, no kidding. Oh, there's but, another train. Yeah, this uh, two sections of double stack headed up the other direction, and all the people who went over on the old Lincoln Highway, well, they saw nothing except double stack. It was sort of unfortunate. No, that was not fair. Not at all. But, uh, you know, and the... The video we did about finding locations in here, we warned people about going over there on the old highway. There's a lot of reasons not to. Right.
Well, that was pretty neat. Oh, I'll say it was. I'm exhausted. Oh, I tell you what. Wow. It, you know what was interesting is when we chased the train in mid-May, mm -hmm. it was snowing yes. in Wyoming. Yes. And here we are chasing the train again in September. Yes. And it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> the summers in Wyoming are don't blink right or you'll miss the whole season uh, that's true try to grow but, a tomato in evanston yeah a no double dairy it's yeah grow it in your indoors or otherwise you know <sighs> yeah anyway we digress but that was <laughs> that was that was really cool yeah. and now off to the ghost train yes. but we cut this trip off a little tiny bit early and we're going to show you the rest of it on Tuesday mm -hmm. because we found something to find. So we have a, a look what we found while we were screwing around with the big boy, oh, yes. which is tightly associated with the big boy because it's something that involves the big boy. And that's Tuesday show. So the rest of this chase is actually Tuesday because we found something neat. We did. Make sense? Makes sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> so look forward to that on yes. Tuesday. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, you know the bed. Are we ready for it? Zoink! The blue button. Yes. Right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with the cool thing that we found. I'll see you then. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye-bye.